morning, I was on my way to the Mount Zion Loop inside the Angeles National Forest. If you see me in my early videos, you'll notice I am not an eye anymore. And no, I'm not just visiting. I actually moved to Los Angeles here in May of 2018. This move allowed me greater access to different state and national parks all over the West Coast. The Mount Zion Loop is actually the very first backpacking trip I've taken in California. And if you want to do this trip as well, you'll need to get an adventure pass from REI or different retailers that allows you parking inside Angeles and other national parks. I'd start my trip out at the Gabrielino Trailhead. Get here early, otherwise you're not going to get parking unless it's down the mountain. From there, I make my way to Sturdivant Falls, which you'll see wasn't that impressive this time of year. But it offered a very challenging uphill and some great views down at the falls even though they weren't really wet. After the falls, Camp Sturdivant was a wonderful break and it offered some great comforts. I definitely recommend making an extended stop here if you're doing this loop. When I made it to Mount Zion, there were some incredible views at 3,500 feet. It was well worth the trip. Hopefully that comes through in the video later. After the grueling switchbacks from uh, Mount Zion, I set up shop at Hoji's camp. Watch the rest of the video to see exactly what happened. Now here I just uh, found my parking spot about a quarter, half mile down the mountain. It was a pain in the butt to get up from there, so next time I'm definitely coming early. But I made my way to the trailhead and got started. If you didn't get an adventure pass before you come, you can buy one at that tent there. There's also a general store which I didn't get a chance to check out and the start of the trailhead. You'll find this part of the trail is going to be super busy. There's just tons of people going down. They want to see the waterfall. This part of the trail is just it's a little crammed. There's a lot of people, but the, the views definitely make up for it. Now along this part of the trail, which is at the end of the, the asphalt, you're going to start running into a lot of different cabins. There's, they're littered all throughout the rest of the Angeles National Forest in this area. They're all really unique. And it really got me thinking about what would my mountain house getaway look like if I had a cabin like this. Now once I passed this log, it wasn't too much further at all to Sturdivant Falls. Um, and when we get there, you'll see that unfortunately this water feature wasn't feeling too wet today. But rest assured, there's still some adventure to be had. Uh, just to the left there, and you can see it now, there is a very loose, rocky trail that goes, it feels like it might as well be straight up. It's, it's super difficult, but it's a lot of fun. Um, I'd hate to fall down that thing though. It was definitely one of the sketchier parts of the trip. Holy shit. that is where I came up from. But look at it. Gorgeous. Carrying on with the trail going north to Camp Sturdivant meant I was going to walk by the water features that uh, usually would feed Sturdivant Falls. So that was cool being able to walk by the stream and creek the entire time, but most of it was just standing water. Along the way, I ran into a lot of these uh, uh, yucca plants. Uh, most were alive, but some, like this unfortunate soul, were not long for this world, apparently. And along the way, I was constantly rewarded with wonderful views of the mountains that surrounded me. Along with plenty of interactions with the gray squirrels that were all over the park. On a lot of backpacking trips, this kind of stuff is few and far between. Uh, I didn't even expect this. I thought it was just going to be a place to get water. I didn't realize that it was a camp with uh, some different cabins. There's a honeymoon cabin you can run out. They have running water. Uh, camp Sturdivant on the north end of this of this loop was uh, uh, not only a lifesaver, but it was a cool place to hang out. I actually ended up taking a nap for about an hour in that hammock just uh, just before noon, uh, which was unexpected. It was it was a nice little treat. 
but unfortunately I couldn't linger too long as I needed to get to Mount Zion and then make camp at Camp Hoji for the evening if I wanted to be able to have something to eat uh, and didn't do all those good things. I was also feeling a little bit dehydrated from the hike up to this point because uh, as you'll find out later I messed up with my water situation. But Camp Sturdivant was definitely a solid choice for me to park it for a little bit and get rested. And it wasn't very far out of Camp Sturdivant that I came across this log across the trail. And you can see it's got some spikes and handles and things cut into it and built into it to give you an obstacle to go over. Uh, this is the only time like that on the trail. All the other logs that I saw were actually cut up in half. So this is the unique feature. All right, I think we get to the top here. Slow going, but the top of Mount Zion here on the, just off the Sturdivant Trail in the Angeles National Forest, baby. Here we go. And it has been, I think I've been at about, since eight o'clock, it's about four hours now. It took me to get here from, uh, I think, Camp, Camp Tree, Camp Tree Flats or something like that. It's cool. It's real cool. It's hot. It's very hot though. This is amazing. I'm descending now. Mount Zion. Got some great views off to the right. Tight trail, a lot of vegetation, but it's fun. The next step is I want to get to Camp Hoji. Haji. Camp Haji, Hoji, Hogi. I want to get there. Um, hopefully. There's a little bit more water. Otherwise, I, I got just enough. I gotta be careful with it. Um, but hopefully there's some water at Camp Hoji. It's a campground, uh, official one. I'm not going off the trail today. But in Angels National Forest, you can actually camp, I think it's 100 feet or 100 yards off trail. Um, and it's also where you can have fires. It's also where you're supposed to go, the bathroom and everything. So, yeah, first time in Angels National Forest. It's pretty good. I made it to Camp Haji, Hoji, Hogi, whatever. I made it to camp. Uh, it's actually a campground here at the park. It's just, I uh, went to get to the bottom of Mount Zion where there's a trail split. Uh, this is only an eighth of a mile away from it. There is a stream at the, towards the bottom of the camp. Uh, it's really, really dry right now. There wasn't any, I mean, there's just been no, nothing. So I filtered some uh, standing water out of a little pool. Uh, I'm only using this to boil. I'm not using that to drink. Uh, this is what I have left for uh, drinking water tonight and through tomorrow. So I think this will be fine because I only got a few miles left to go. And right now I'm going to eat something. Uh, but because I'm very thirsty, um, I'm going to use, I'm going to boil a couple cups of this and uh, make up here. Mix up some of this stuff, pepper beef with rice. And that'll use about two cups of water, um, which means that I'll be having those two cups of water as well when I eat it. And then I'm also gonna make a cup of coffee, uh, which I was saving for the morning, but because I wanna go get as much hydration, get as hydrated as possible tonight, and right now, uh, I'm gonna have that cup of coffee today. All right, it's boiling. This. Two cups. 
Enjoy. <laughs> All right. Hold and repeat. See you in 10 minutes. Well, hello there. Around 7.40ish, 8ish, I pulled into the parking lot uh, for Sturdivant, Sturdivant Falls. S-T-U-R-E-V-A-N-T. Sturdivant. Sturdivant. Um, after that, I found no parking spot, so I had to go back down the mountain a little bit to uh, actually find a parking spot on the side of, side of the road like everybody else who didn't get there quite early enough. Um, after that, walked up to... Well, I stopped and looked at the view because it was fucking great. Uh, and then... Once I uh, got back up to the regular area, took, took the downhill to Sturdivant Falls. Um, Sturdivant Falls was, as you probably saw, non-existent. There was like a small, very small trickle of water um, over there. So uh, it wasn't, I didn't even think it was the falls at first. I was like, oh, this is just like a water feature or something like that. Um, it's, <clears throat> I just got to keep going for the falls. But uh, lo and behold, they never showed up. So that was it. And... From there, once you leave Sturdivant Falls, there is a very, very, very steep, uh, loose rock uh, incline that you can go up to, to the top of the falls. Uh, it's something he's got, if you're out in the LA area, uh, I recommend trying it if, if you're comfortable with it. And from there I made, I made my way up to, uh, there's a spruce, something spruce campground. Then there's a Sturdivant uh, camp. It's like this old, like a bunch of cabins up there. Um, not newish, it, not new at all. Uh, but you, there's a historical thing. You can see the very last ranger station in, I don't know, maybe maybe it's Angeles Forest or maybe it's something, uh, whatever. It's like the last ranger, like the last original ranger building um, on a trail in its original location. So um, some other ones are original, but they've been moved or something like that. So you can you can see it. You can go inside. Uh, Camp Sturdivant saved my butt. I thought, I, I didn't come, I didn't check ahead to see if there was water flowing or anything like that um, from the falls so when that was really dried up <laughs> I kind of thought I was a little screwed because all I brought for water was this and this and that lasted me I mean I was trying to make it last but that <clears throat> I was it was it's been hot all day it, I need a lot more water than what I had um, my plan earlier or yesterday was to go to REI pick up a three liter brat bladder so I could have it inside here, this this bag, which is a new bag for me. It's the Osprey, 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 um, Osprey 58 or 68 uh, Exos model. It was on sale at REI. Uh, it's a killer bag. I'm definitely gonna do a review video on this at some point in the future. But it's been it's been freaking great today. Uh, way better than the sorry, there's a squirrel. Uh, way better than the Tetons one. I the Teton one I got, but at the same time that one was like 50 bucks. This one is, you know, 220 regular price, 160 something on sale. Anyway, it's got a water water reservoir in it, a water bladder you can stick in, or a water reservoir, water holder. It's got a space for water you can stick a water bladder reservoir into. Uh, it's got little straps and loops and everything to make it all work. So that was really good, uh, or would have been really good, except last night when I got home, uh, my girlfriend had some people over. So um i was like no i'm not going to REI. i'm just gonna hang out here have a have a few drinks and then uh that turned into i said maybe a little later than i should before coming here not drinking not saying not being as hydrated as i should before i came here uh and then when i just kind of was like there's gonna be water there's a stream i'll filter water um, i'm still using the uh i forget the msr the msr one um, i think these went down in price like 70 bucks instead of 80 bucks an hour or something like that when i saw it at rei um, here in Burbank, <clears throat> but there has been no water. The only water that's been available has been standing water in like little creeks and stuff like that. Um, and I didn't want to, I didn't filter that beginning. So, uh, I have done that now and I'll, <clears throat> you guys, you guys may, might've already seen that piece of the video. If not, it's coming up, but I had to, um, I'm sorry. Once I got to Camp Sturdivant, as I was talking about, I didn't have, I had like no water left. I was like, fuck, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to do the other five miles after this place, just go to my car and go home because I'm not going to have any water left. And I don't want to be, I don't really like drinking out of standing water, even if it's filtered. So, um, what they had at Camp Sturdivant, they have, uh, buildings and they're open. I don't know how often they're open, but they were open today and there's people there. 
there's like coffee, there's tea, there's um, oatmeal, there's a whole mess of stuff, but most importantly, they have running water. And you're more than welcome to go inside of the kitchen, fill up your, fill up your stuff, and you're good to go. Um, I almost thought about staying at the Spruce Campground, because it was just a little bit, little ways back from where Sturdivant was. I thought about staying there, cooking, drinking, and doing all my stuff at that camp, and then tomorrow morning coming this way. But I didn't feel like walking five more miles tomorrow. Um, so I filled up my stuff. I drank a bunch while I was there, laid in a hammock for a little while. And after that, um, got to the top of Mount Zion. Uh, it, uh, the view was really good. I mean, you guys have probably already seen that piece of the video. I loved it. The view was great. It was a little obstructed by some some vegetation and things like that at the very top, but uh, I mean, nonetheless, it was it was great. There was nobody else up there. If it was just like a little bit cooler, maybe breezy, it would have been like I would have stayed up there even longer, just checking it out. You could see you could see LA. Um, that's really cool. It's a great view of the city. There's wonderful views of whatever is on the I think it's the south side, um, the south side of the mountains or maybe west. But then on the north side, there's Mount Wilson. You can see the observatory stuff, which you can actually drive up to. Um, but at some point, I think I'm definitely going to do the hike from Sturdivant up to Mount Wilson. Uh, I met another guy today who tried that, doing it. But he's like, I got 0.2 miles. I'm like, nah, I got to turn around. So um, it's a pretty, uh, pretty laborious task, it sounds like. Um, but after Mount Zion, man, it, it, it was tough. It was, it was all downhill, but... I think it's a lot easier to go uphill because you can control your speed. You can use your you can use trekking poles a lot easier. Um, when you're going downhill, there's a lot, especially when you're carrying a pack, a uh, heavier pack. Uh, it kind of forces you down. You got to catch yourself constantly, and it's really rough on your knees and around your legs and on your feet. And if you're not wearing the right size type shoes, you're, they'll slide around in there. So, um, really, I think uh, that that was I could have done without that part of the trip. Everything else up to that point was challenging, but like rewarding. That was just uh, pain in the ass. It was murderous. Uh, after I was able to get some water, eat, and rest up a little bit after doing those first nine miles, I found a spot at the campground that was relatively flat. That was a bit of a challenge because a lot of the, the area around there was just at a slight incline. There's a lot of rocks everywhere. It was super dry as well. So I was able to find this one and get everything set up. I don't, I don't know if it comes across or not in the video, but it was super hot here at this campground. And, you know, I was down in the valley and, and everything was kind of shaded, but there was absolutely like no breeze coming through. And it was, it was pretty challenging to stay hydrated and get the things done that I needed to do. I tried to pick an open spot that had rocky here, but I tried to pick an open spot that had that had access to stars. So up above me there is uh, not there's some tree cover, but still an open sky. So if the stars are up tonight, I'll be seeing them. Let's go. Hi everybody, so 
you'll notice I'm not at camp anymore. Uh, I actually, bye buddy, uh, I decided to come home from this trip and not do the overnight. So there's, there's a few reasons for that. Number one, my leg hurts. Uh, my right leg up and up in like my quad area um, it was really sore. That was a small reason. I could have probably done that, but um, I decided to leave partially because of that. Reason number two that I decided to leave camp and, and go home that night was, was water. This was honestly the biggest issue because it was a very dehydrating experience going up and through everything. Uh, I was out and drinking the night before a little bit and I just wasn't as hydrated walking into it. So um, I didn't shoot as much on as much video uh, of me going through the stuff and going down the switchbacks. So I didn't shoot any video on after Mount, Mount Zion until I got to camp actually um, because I was so dehydrated. I, as I was going down the, uh, the switchbacks from Zion, um, about halfway through, I, you know, my, with the heavy pack, it was super hot. Um, my, <clears throat> I could tell, like, I was putting the pole down, move my leg, but my legs were just shaking a little bit. So I, I rested and broke and took a lot of breaks, but not having access to, uh, number one, a lot of water, and then number two, not having access to, um, not having access to decent water, um, that I, for water that I felt was decent, and just having a standing water camp Pogies. Uh, put me on edge a little bit and I, I wasn't gonna feel comfortable drinking a lot of it um, And I went through the little the drinking water that I had left in that little blue pouch like I mentioned in the video I, I didn't go through because I ended up leaving right, but I, I had very little left by um, We'll say like four just after four o'clock, which is when I decided to leave So if I was gonna stay the entire night the rest of the night if I was going to uh, hike the other few miles out or a couple miles out the rest of the next day um, I, I wasn't going to be in good shape. So reason number three that I left, uh, my cat Bailey's decided to join me as well. Uh, but reason number three that I left is bears. Nope. Sorry. Let me correct that. Bear. So the entire trip, not an issue. Nothing, nothing at all. Um, I had bear spray. I had it readily, ready and available, um, right in my pack so I could grab it if I needed to. When I got to Camp Hoji's, uh, there's a couple of rangers there like fixing up the, the, the bathroom stall areas, uh, blocking them off, hoarding them up, or doing something, right? It doesn't matter what they've done. They also had recently installed a new bear box for, for you, so you can keep your food in it at night, right? Um, but as I was going down to the creek to get uh, some water, one of them goes, hey, we just put this bear box in a little while ago. Make sure you keep your food in. That way, if the bear comes, it's fine. Now, I walked away, I walked away and was like, okay, thank you. And then as I got down to the, the creek to filter water, I thought, he said the bear, not bears in general. He, he mentioned, he specifically said, in case the bear comes. So uh, I got in my head a little bit about that, wondering if there was a bear that regularly visited. And that was kind of a problem because I'd been at that place for a few hours already and nobody else was setting up camp. So for me to be alone in a bear, in, a, in an area where a bear possibly frequency uh, that was a little intimidating and when I went back up to the creek I'm like okay or when I came back up from the creek I was thinking okay I'm gonna ask the ranger what he meant and just clarify because he probably meant bears in general uh, and if he did, means it's the bear or there's like one that comes here quite a bit then I'll kind of decide <laughs> at that point lo and behold I come back up to the water the rangers are gone nobody else is there uh, and then as I, and that kind of, that information was floating around my head, but I still like, I set up my tent and as you saw, I got, got everything ready, put my food away and then a few more people came through. Like there's a lot of people coming through Camp Hoji's from the Lower Winter Creek Trail, but the, a few of them were like, oh, what are you going to do about the bear? Again, for me being alone in a campground where it didn't seem like anybody else was staying, um, even though it's a very low risk overall and low likelihood that actually happening. I, I just didn't feel comfortable. I had an uneasy feeling for a couple hours and then um, I decided to pack up everything and get out before dark because you can't be on the road after eight, eight o'clock. So around four o'clock-ish is when I started packing everything up. I made it to my car right before eight, uh, which I believe was about, let's say two and a half miles and not one of my best moments, not one of my proudest moments and it sucks to put in a lot of work because you want to do an overnight camp somewhere and spend time outside and then get in your head about it. But at the end of the day, I, I got an uneasy feeling. 
uh, sat with me for a while and I just couldn't shake it. So I, instead of, I don't even want to say risking it because I don't know what it is that I was really risking, but instead of kind of living that night out with that feeling and being uneasy and not enjoying uh, the environment and camping and, and what that is, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to have a bad experience. So I decided to, to carry on and, and I decided to leave and uh, come back and have a better experience some other time. Now, here's the thing in my mind. I'm, I'm definitely okay with the struggle and the challenge of, of backpacking, hiking, camping, and you know, whatever it is. I, that, that struggle, those, those, those moments that suck, those are the ones that, that you really talk about afterwards. But I would say uh, I'm, you know, I'm definitely okay with the struggle. Uh, I'm, I was going down those switchbacks after Mount Zion, even though they're not the worst in the world, right? They're, they were still pretty strenuous. They were hard. Um, I was worn out. Uh, it was hot. The, I, I remember that part of the trail I remember the most uh, viscerally because it, it was the biggest challenge to, to me. Uh, I, there was a couple of hikers that I even met on that part who we, we didn't talk a lot, right? It, it would be one of us would take a break and the others at some point would pass them and then they would take a break and then that person, you know, the person would just pass would pass us um, and we, you know, you'd see each other, you'd smile, uh, you every single one of us who knew like man this sucks like we had that shared connection then uh we had that shared emotion that shared feeling then and then being able to see everybody rest at the bottom of, of those switchbacks right there was was pretty crazy too we were all sharing a similar stressful strenuous experience and loving it um, and hanging it at the same time so i'm okay with this the stress the challenges and that those kind of things that come with that come with backpacking camping um, I wasn't okay with the, the uneasy feeling and since it was only a couple miles out to my car I decided I'm not I don't want to have a bad experience or poor experience um, camping like this where it's an uneasy feeling I, I guess what I'm trying to say there's a difference between going through sucky experiences like while you're camping and, and those are a little bit different and having something on your mind gnawing at you eating away at you that wasn't that wasn't as fun so again that's why I decided to hightail it out of there that's why the end of this video is me at home uh, with, the, with the dog and the cat. Uh, but I decided to do it and I wanted to explain why I did it. And maybe some of you share my feeling, maybe think, some of you guys think, uh, man, that was dumb and un unnecessary. It happened, bear attacks are so infrequent. You should have brought more water, which yes, I agree with you there. Uh, since then, I've actually bought a three liter bladder that goes in my new bag. Um, and I've got uh, I've got to, I've got I figured that out. I'm not ever gonna have a water issue again. I, going through this was plenty um, And then you know, you might all say like you shouldn't push yourself so hard um, and, and hurt your leg like and, and got injured hurt your leg Then you gotta you gotta know when to slow down that kind of stuff, but I don't know. I, I feel like <laughs> We're not all experts. I'm not an expert. I'm really just I'm doing this. I'm figuring things out as I go um, And I'm trying to make the best decisions to have with the information I've got so if you know something I should have done differently, if you, you have advice for me, if you have comments for me, please leave them. Um, if you want to see more for me, uh, which would be great, be cool if you did, please subscribe, please like the videos. It, it's a very small channel right now, but uh, I, I, it's something I want to grow. I want to make this a, a big part of my life. And uh, and I, I, hope, I hope you'll allow me to do that. Thank you.